Thank you for joining the Reverend Dr. Sean Michael Greener, radio host, national pastor, author, and speaker for Sundays with Dr. Sean. Hold on tight. Here comes the truth. Has it ever been a long time? My lands. The United States Navy. Good old H2O with some aloe. Yo. How's everybody doing? Hey, Linda and or Susan. How you doing? I hope everybody's doing well. Hope you're doing well. Uh, I am also live on Spreaker right now. So if you subscribe to Spreaker, which you should, uh, go to my Spreaker page and click on subscribe and follow and all that. I'm on Parlor at SM Greener. I think something like that. I'll post the link. And uh, Parlor's pretty cool. And uh, Twitter at the Ninja Pastor, Instagram at the Ninja Pastor. Um, wrote some books and all that. Blah blah blah. I know you have a lot to do today. I have a lot to do today. Hey, Angie. Hey, John. How are you? A lot of activity going on. Right across the street, down the street. I live in a pretty serene place, but there's a lot going on right now. And there's a tractor being used across the street. You know, I want, I want to ride the tractor. I just want to do stuff. It's a front-end loader, little one of those little ones, but it's cool. Got the tracks on them. That's what I want to do. You know I want to do that. I, I desperately need to do that. That's what I need to do. Just let me use it a little while. I don't know what I dig up, but find something. I dig it up, cover it up. You know, that's how it goes. Hey there, how are you? So I, one of the things, um, by the way, if you think of it, like and share and all that stuff with this, um, I, I really appreciate it. And if you listen to the speaker, share that too. I will post a link to this on Parler. <clears throat> it's very important. You click the up arrow and then the echo you can either do echo with comment or just echo. Echo with comment is pretty good. But, so I almost did a live last night uh, in the wee hours, right? The wee hours of the morning. And I thought, man, I need to do this while I'm thinking of it. Because then I'll forget. I get up in the morning, get going, doing stuff, and then I'm all like, you know. So, you know how that is. You have a great idea at nighttime, then you forget about it in the daytime. and It's kind of a bummer. You know, I've done that. I've done that with book ideas and um, different things I wanted to write. And uh, speeches and things. And You know, that's why a lot of people keep um, little notepads next to their, or a little voice recorder. I guess you use your iPhone or whatever. And I've done that before, but I didn't want to wake anybody up. Anyway, suffice it to say thankfully the idea came back and, and a young man who I'm friends with, I met through a tragedy. Uh, his name is David Gale. Really nice young man. Very smart. <clears throat> He's extremely smart young man. I like him a lot. Uh, he's a good human being works in social work. You know, I think his mom is an educator, I think educator or something along those lines. And, uh, just a good dude, good all around dude. Well, he had re <clears throat> he'd responded to my post about Nick Cannon. I said, I'm disappointed in Nick. It's been revealed now that Nick Cannon is a racist. He is a bigot. He's an anti-Semite. And he's an acolyte of Louis Farrakhan. And, you know, that's the hard no for me. I liked Nick. I liked him. I liked all of his work. He did a lot of work with kids. Um, you know, kids shows and... And I thought, you know, this this is a neat young man. We all, as a family, used to watch him. Um, what's he on? Ten shows? I don't know how many. I don't know. He's, he was on a lot of shows, a lot of things. And, of course, he was famously married to uh, the singer and um, Mariah Carey. And... Uh, you know, they had a big divorce. And he has this real popular show he's doing now called Masked Singer. And I thought, hey, Miss Robbie, love you. Um, 
And uh, Angie, say hey to Sean for me. I miss that brother. I miss seeing him. I miss all y'all. Our Kehala was one of a kind. It was really, really super great. Anyhow, uh, so Nick Cannon, interestingly, did this show, does this show, very huge hit, uh, called Masked Singer. And the premise of this show, I don't know if you've ever seen it. I, I didn't really watch it initially, but then I really liked it. Was, uh, or is, that people, these big celebrities, will come on the show and they'll be wearing a whole outfit. It's not just a mask. It's a, it's a whole big fancy outfit. And they assume a character, you know. Um, and the whole time they're on it, it's super secret. Nobody knows, not even Nick knows who the person is. And they're big stars. I mean, we're talking big stars. That said, um, the big reveal, you know, you vote for the person, and, and some of them are fantastic. Some of them are music stars, and and uh, some are actors or, or celebrities of another sort, but can really sing. Some can't sing at all. Uh, Gronkowski uh, was on there, and uh, he couldn't sing at all, but he was fun as all get out. Um, actually, Sarah Palin was on there. I got the quick quick little uh, message saying, hey, watch this tonight. See if you like it. And uh, I watched and I said, oh, check her out. That's Sarah Palin. Baby got back. She did. She was hilarious and she was awesome. And at first they didn't want to treat her well, but then they came around and um, they found that she's actually a super, super nice lady. Really, really incredible person. So anyway, all that for background. Um, Sometimes people go on the show, celebrities go on the show because they're trying to rebuild their life and they've had an epiphany or whatever. And Nick is very good at what he does. I'm not going to take it away from him. He's, he's silly in a sense because he, he wears the craziest clothes and he just likes that. That's his preference. And, and that's his, that's a, that's, you know, that's his, hey, A.G. Brown, I've been missing doing them. I've been Mr. Busy. Um, it, what's interesting to me is it's such a lovable show and he's part of the reason, you know, remember he used to do America's Got Talent and then he got fired from that show. Well, there was a big fuss back and forth about, um, there was a big fuss about money and a lot of other things and, uh, he wasn't very gracious about it. And that's the first indication that I had that maybe Nick has got some issues going on. Um, I knew politically he was super left, but I don't, you know, you can be, I have friends that are super left and, but we, we put all that aside and we say, you know, yeah, friends and relatives really, because I love them as a human being. I love them. I'm able to see, I'm able to see the good in them and they're able to see and accept the good in me and acknowledge that we're not going to agree on everything. Right? We're not going to agree on everything. But here's the thing. And, and I've learned this over the years operationally, um, in situations that different careers, uh, put me in places they put me in to be exposed to utter and complete evil. And one of the things I learned and was taught and was trained and experienced firsthand is evil as it is doesn't start off looking evil, right? It doesn't start off looking evil. It doesn't, you don't, you don't see it as evil. It doesn't, it doesn't. It doesn't carry the the countenance and the the presence of evil. It it looks good, you know. It looks interesting. It looks funny. It looks whatever. It's very enticing. It's very acceptable. Very rarely do you ever see evil that looks like it is evil. You you never see that. You don't. Well, I should say you rarely see it. When you do see it. It's like, wow, that person is just, whoa, really out there. I'll give you some descriptions. Obviously, we go to Hitler. We go to Adolf Hitler, um, uh, Idi Amin, uh, terrorists like Abu Nidal, uh, 
Osama bin Laden, all of these people. They're just flat out evil. There's, there's lists of them in the world that we see and we know. Oh, yeah. But see, when they first started out, they didn't, they didn't come out as super evil. They're obviously evil now. Uh, I think, you know, the Chinese Communist Party is evil. I don't think it is. I know it is. They're responsible for killing hundreds of thousands, hundred thousand, allegedly, in the United States. But they did it. There's no questioning that they did it. They're evil. That is an evil regime. Iran, evil. Flat out evil. And many others over the years. But sometimes you don't see it as that. Nick Cannon, uh, if, you, uh, if, if you go through and you read or listen to what he has said, he believes those things. My job isn't to engage with him somehow and convince him otherwise you can't talk evil out of being evil once something or someone is evil you can't talk them out of being evil you just can't i had this discussion this uh past several days i had an occasion to be in uh, tallahassee tallahassee florida and i met this really great guy named neil and some other folks uh that um but neil and i had a great conversation on the porch and we just talked about a lot of things, but we talked about uh, evil and what you do with evil. And there's some things that you, you can't, um, they are recalcitrant, incorrigible. They are going to always drive toward evil. They're, no matter what you do, they're going to be Islam in its, in its truth, in the truth of Islam is that way. The only time you're ever going to see They're going to capitulate only for strategic purposes. If they're injured, they're going to pretend to give up. They're going to pretend to surrender. Um, you know, but then they're just waiting till they get better, or they're reloading, or whatever the case may be. There's a reason for that. The left is that way, right? They're beating on a car, beating on a car, beating on a car, and then all of a sudden the guy throws it, in, or the woman throws it into drive and drives over them, or hits them and they they're bleeding from the head, you know, thirty feet away. And then it's, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Then they go into the victim mode, right? Until they heal. Until that little thing is over. They switch from they switch from attacker to victim. Victim. Victim right away. Until they get out of trouble. And then they go back to it. It's like we do with God and asking forgiveness for our sins. And we get ourselves in a jam and we say, God, please forgive me, please forgive me, please forgive me. I'm not saying we're evil, but we have a little bit of evil in all of us, you know. And uh, what's interesting to me is a lot of times we, we fall for that. Almost every time we fall for it. But I've looked evil in the eye. You know, I've watched people uh, be stoned. I've watched beheadings. I've watched people be thrown off roofs. Um I've I've seen people murder innocent people from close by. I've I've seen the actions of evil and I've interviewed evil people. Um yeah, I've had to deal with evil people. Evil exists and you can't talk evil out of being evil. The the, the second part of this this won't be long. It's only be a couple more minutes, I guess. More than a couple more, but the second part of this is we are so divided, air quotes, we're so divided, right? Oh, as a nation, we're so divided. Oh, Trump is so polarizing and so he's dividing us. No, he's not dividing us. He's exposing the divide. What he's done is peel off the layers of fakeness and pretend. He's peeled off the costumes of the mass singers, if you will. And he said, this is who they really are. And now look what's happening. So many people, big names, are running scared because of the evil things that they've done. And he's exposing them. And some of these things are so evil, you can't comprehend them. And, and, and if he wins in 2020, good Lord, I hope he wins. November. I hope he wins. We're doomed as a nation if they don't. Because now you're seeing the, the left, which is evil, 
is peeling away and peeling away because they're so angry at President Trump. They're letting us see. They're letting us see who they really are and what they really are, right? They're letting us see it. Maybe they're not even trying, but we're seeing it. People like Nick Cannon, you know. Nick Cannon has a phenomenal career. You know, it's interesting. He he really hid a lot of who he is and what he believes while he was in the hundreds of millions of dollars money making. But now he's got hundreds of millions of dollars. He's set for life. And now all of a sudden, he's maligning the Jews that paid him all that money, the white people that paid him all that money, and the white people that helped promote him and push him forward, and white and Jews and everything. And the things he has to say are just despicable. But then you have the, the, the contrast of Roseanne Barr. Now let me say, when all that happened with her, I said, I'm no fan of Roseanne Barr. I, I don't like her comedy. I don't think she's funny. Um, I don't think she's very good. She's certainly a horrible actress. The resurgence of her show was so popular. And then, you know, she was uh, intoxicated on Ambien and wine and rambled on, ran it on and this and that. And, uh, and then she gets canceled. She gets canceled from everything. Society cancels her. The left cancels her. That's kind of what we do, right? We just sort of accept it. Now, Roseanne Barr, again, I don't care for anything that she does. She capitulated. She apologized. She, just like Drew Brees, the Hall of Fame quarterback of the the uh, Saints, New Orleans Saints. Phenomenal guy in the community. I mean, you, you cannot... Look, Drew B's phenomenal. He's done, you know. Drew is Drew is admitted. Uh, he's a Democrat. He's a leftist. If he runs for office, which he intends to do, or he did, before all this happened, um, he when he stood up for police, uh, and then quickly apologized, you know, and all this because he withering, you know, even his own team and all this stuff came after him. He didn't even say anything bad. He didn't say anything wrong. But they didn't like it. And so that's how they do. They'll, they'll blister you. You know, the left is, they're masters of social media. So you see planted a lot of different things about, oh, I heard Parler is CIA, uh, but it's, but it's it, you know, they're doing this to get records of all the hardcore conservatives, stupid stuff. Um, not that stuff like that doesn't happen. Not for nothing. But I, but I want to say, you know, Dan Bongino is one of the owners. There are several conservative um, thinkers that are that own this. That went in together and said, "Okay, everybody says we need to have an alternative to Twitter and Facebook. Well, here, let's make it. Let's build it. Let's find a let's find a find a way." So we're in the process of doing that now, right? We're we are we are in the process of. Anyway, I want, I don't want to get off track on that. We're so divided as a nation, air quotes, so divided as a nation. We're so, we are so polarized and, and we must say Trump is the reason. Trump's not the reason. Well, they, they do hate him, but they hate him because he's representing us. They hate him because he's peeling off the masks and the layers. And, and they're so mad that they, they no longer even control what they do and what they say. So how they actually feel. So you can't talk evil out of being evil. And sometimes we are meant to be divided. And by that, I mean this. Number one, evil is evil in its core. We can, we can say that, you know, we want to educate them. We want to do all these, you know, we'll do a forum and sit there and, and have a conversation. Well, first of all, you won't, we've seen that. You don't have that. You don't have that. They riot, they break things, you know, a conservative goes to Berkeley and they do $500,000 worth of damage or millions of dollars worth of damage. And then afterwards, they want us to fix it. You know, <clears throat> the George Floyd thing, that's, you know, they use that and they say, you got to stop killing unarmed black men. You know, this is, this is a systemic racism thing. Well, no, it's not. 
No, it's not. If you look at the numbers, and this is why they don't want to look at the numbers. They never want to look at the data. They never want to look at the data because data tells the story as it is without bias. And the data is, is it's an extremely small percentage. They kill, police kill more unarmed white people than they do unarmed black people. And in those cases where they killed an unarmed black person, we, we, we rail against it. We, the, the conservatives, we, we rail against it. We say, man, this is horrible. We got to do something about this. This is what we suggest we do. So let's investigate this. And then if there's charges that should be done, which looks like there should be, then we prosecute that person to the fullest extent of the law. And we do that. It happens over and over and over. So we do, we do what we, you say that you, you want justice and you have all these stupid slogans, these chants that you do while destroying everything. Let me just say, protest and riot. Let me est- establish really quickly, protest and riot, okay? We have a right to peaceably protest. That does not include blocking roads. That does not include shutting down businesses that desperately need revenue. That does not include clogging blocks and blocks and blocks of, of city streets. It doesn't include that. It doesn't include marching into people's yards and, and saying you're going to burn their house down and kill their dog and kill them and destroying the, the gate to their home. It doesn't include that. That's, not, that's riotous behavior. And that's behavior that it should be met with bullets. Oh, my God. Bullets. You you block a car and then you be you bang on that car with your hands and fists. You whatever you do with f- hands or fists or bats or whatever, and you bang on that car and you block that car and you're screaming at that driver. That driver needs to drive over you because that driver needs to get away. We've seen it over and over and over. People get dragged out of cars and they get killed. These are not protesters; they are riotous murderers. And that's how they should be treated. The fact is, we have allowed a climate where we don't get behind these people in mass, right? So the rioters come by the hundreds or thousands, and they surround the individual good person, and they beat them up. They do it with the police now. They take over police stations. Listen, there's no going back on this, just so you understand. There's no going back on this. There's not a reverse here, right? We're not going backwards. This will not be undone. Now, rest assured, if President Trump is reelected in November, please God, he's going to regulate. He's going to regulate. The next four years are going to be spent on a few things. One, getting the economy fired up making some some sustainable changes in how we run our economy such that when he's gone from office, it'll take a lot more to undo it. And believe me, the left will try to undo it. Justice, um, law and order, all of these things, he's going to be the hammer. He is going to be the hammer. But a lot of other things, a lot of blessed things, a lot of great things. But the hammer needs to fall. That still isn't going to reverse it. Listen, it's just like when you get a taste of... An animal gets a taste of blood. You know, the saying is... Oh, once the shark is a taste of blood, you have to take the shark. Pfft, so stupid. Once a bear gets a taste of blood, you have to kill the bear. So stupid. It's dumb. It's completely untrue. But in this case, when you have human beings that seek to destroy, as they do, as the left does... Because this is who the left is now. You, 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 may, you, have, you have people who are not as far left, but they're still clinging to that group. You've got comedians holding the severed bloody head of Donald Trump and claiming that she's been a victim, that she's been maligned. You don't talk evil out of being evil. Right? You've got governors. Governor of New York. Personally responsible for thousands of... Of deaths. He's on the late night shows yucking it up with the with the other liberals. They all stick together. Our problem is we don't do that. When we see 
uh, the neighbor across the street and there's protesters coming and they're going up in the yard. We don't surround him with our firearms or other weapons. We don't surround him or her. We go, isn't that terrible? Isn't that a shame? Boy, I'm glad that's not me. We say, well, it's not me. It's not my, that's not my fight. Well, it's all of our fight. And they keep doing it. And they get worse until they break into police stations. They rob, they loot, they steal guns, tasers, ammunition, and they took over police stations. Not just one, but several. And they're allowed to do that. There was no civilian army to come and of conservatives, or right-thinking conservatives, say, hey, you know what? We're not going to allow this. You're not going to burn our block. You're not burning our businesses. The reason why that husband and wife, I think it was in St. Louis, you know, now they're facing the, the uh, prosecution's probably going to indict them. They came and took their weapons completely illegally. That's why second call defense. I'll, I'll, I will post a link. If you own a gun, you must have second call defense. You must do it. Nobody's coming to save you. Yeah, I make pennies. I make pennies on each person that signs up. Big deal. It's the best protection available. I've had it for years. I will never not have it. Anyway, I'll put the link on there. Those people, they've come, they've come against them. Society has come against them. And the, the corrupt politicians and corrupt prosecutors and, and attorneys general and, and all of these uh, the people, they've come against them. Be, because they stood there alone. What if, instead of two people, a terrified wife with a pistol and a husband who's just trying to save his home and save his wife and save his pets because he's watched TV and now he's watched it, what's on TV come to his neighborhood where there's a big gate, wrought iron gates, and they tore them down. Who's going to pay to fix that? Hundreds of thousands of dollars. Who's going to pay to fix it? That's not protest. And they're yelling at him, we're going to kill you. We're going to rape you. We're going to set fire to your house. Take everything you have. We'll kill your pets. This is what they're yelling. What if there were a hundred, like you and me, also armed with comfort and skill at arms, standing behind and beside them and saying, no, you won't. You're not coming in this neighborhood. Well, that's so racist. People should be able to go wherever they want. No. No, they shouldn't. No, they shouldn't. No. Big mistake. You can't talk evil out of being evil. I said I said uh, a little bit ago, and it's, it's also in the title, sometimes we're meant to be divided, right? Sometimes there's a clear delineation between good and evil. And there's a clear delineation of good and evil now. The problem is, the good people have become silent. We've become fearful of stepping forward and saying, Oh, no, you don't. There are absolutes in the world, and I will absolutely kill you if you attack me or my property. I will stop the threat. You bang on my car, you stand in the way, and guess what? I'm going to drive away, and if I have to drive away over you, that I will do. Because there aren't thousands of us doing that. Because there's a backup of hundreds of cars, including ambulances, just trying to get to somewhere, and fire, fire trucks just trying to get somewhere to save people. Because there aren't hundreds of thousands pressing the pedal on the right, the, lo- the, the skinny pedal on the right, the gas pedal, and going forward. That's why they do it. And we've got to stop. Let them be divided from us. Let us not be divided. Let the evil that is out there, you know, you say, well, Nick Cannon, he's so likable. Why do you keep calling him evil? Why do you keep saying he's evil? Because he is evil. Read what he wrote. Read what he said. Listen to what he says. You can listen to it. It's evil. It's disgusting. But there aren't millions of people coming out against him. 
There aren't. There are a lot of people silent. There are a lot of people appalled. But they aren't coming out against him. They aren't screaming for him to be canceled. You say, well, that's not how we do. That We don't do that here. We don't do that. Conservatives don't do that. We don't boycott. You are late to the game, folks, if you don't understand that. You have to decide. You have to resolve. And then you have to stand. Just being a good person, just knowing and understanding actual history, isn't enough. We have to bind together, arm in arm, shoulder to shoulder. And we have to stand against evil. Listen, we're doing this awesome study in, uh, in Revelation. Uh, Corny Dansby is teaching it. Phenomenal. And Walt Sherlock, Walt Sherlock, one of our dear friends, just lost his wife. God bless you. Lost his son at 18 years old and just lost his wife. God bless you. You've been on my mind, Walt, if you're listening. But Walt Fletcher, um, they're co-teaching it. It's phenomenal teaching on Revelation. I've taught on Revelation. I did a whole big long series on it, on uh, the collision of faith and politics on Blog Talk Radio and, and as well as on Spreaker. It's all free, by the way. So Revelation is real and it's telling us what's coming. It's telling us you know, people freak out when they, they say it's too hard to understand. Well, there's there's a reason for that. We'll go too deep into that right now, but we are not to have a part. We are not to be joined with evil. We're to create a dividing line of evil and good. When people like the people in St. Louis are or have people marching against them, and they're standing there by themselves. You know, we think that somebody's coming to help us. But they don't come, and they're not coming, and now the police can't come because the police can't do anything. They get sued. That was all by design. You hear all this, you know, all this stuff. Now, look, the George Floyd thing, Ahmed Arbery, completely unjust. But let's be fair. Look at the autopsy results of George Floyd. Look at those Look at cause of death. Look at all those things. And then let's rediscuss when you know a little bit about it. What happened to him was completely wrong. Completely wrong. Shouldn't be done. The officers involved have been charged. They've all been fired. That's justice. Then they're going to be prosecuted. They'll never work as police officers again. Most likely they will spend, if not the remainder of their life, a good part of it in jail. That's justice. It's been done. It's being done. All of this other stuff that's going on, fake. It's fake. It's fraud. It's pushing, 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 pushing. Pushing out goodness. Pushing out righteousness. Pushing out the the whole notion of doing the right thing. And allow that whole thing. Now there's a whole big cadre of white Young people all the way up to old people who are Antifa and they're, they're, it's funny, anti-fascist. They are exactly fascist. And they have an objective to tear down our country, tear down the government, tear down the commerce, everything. You say, why would people do that? Stop saying, why would people do that? Stop asking yourself, why are they doing this? You can't talk evil out of being evil. Sometimes we are meant to be divided and you have to stand against it and say, I don't care how you grew up. I don't care any of the, you look at the the median income of the parents of the people that are out there, the white people that are, you know, now committing all this violence and destruction. You look at them, they didn't come from struggle. They're wealthy. Don't trouble yourself with why. I used to teach, uh, um, uh, looking forward to being attacked. It was a seminar I wrote uh, for women to protect them from being raped. First thing is looking forward to being attacked. You're paying attention, situational awareness, things that you can do to make you not a victim. I, do, I spoke it to, to thousands all across the country. I'd love to do that again. It's fun to empower women to be safer. And one of the things I would tell them is if you're being attacked or you're being raped, 
take out of your mind and take out of your mouth and take out of your soul the question, why are you doing this to me? Because while you're asking the evil that is perpetrating a rape and then subsequently, most likely, a murder upon you, you're empowering them to kill you. That's reality. That's reality. All of this is by design. They push back, they push back, they push back. They move the line, right? Don't cross this line. They cross that line. Then we read another line. Don't cross this line. Then cross that line. You have to have boundaries. Sometimes the way you enforce boundaries is with little kids. You, you, you're consistent. And you say, no, 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 little Johnny. Little Johnny's always the one getting in trouble. When, when you capitulate over and over and over, eventually they take over. And they don't have good intent. They'll ruin this country. And the ruination of this country will happen so fast, you won't be able to believe it. Now, I want you to ask you this. Whether you're a gun person or you're not a gun person, why do you think they strive so hard to take away our firearms? Because once we are unarmed, we are defenseless. And I am telling you, you can try to talk evil out of being evil. But it's a fool's errand. Shock and awe, brute and sustained force. It's the only thing that stops it. I can't tell you what to do when you're driving your car. I can't tell you what to do if you have a business and you see marching mob come down the street. I can't tell you what to do if you're a person who lives in a home and, and there's a mob coming down the street. I can't tell you what to do. I can give you strategic tactical advice, but I can't tell you what to do in your heart. I can't, tell, I, I can't shift that. I can't shift from that. I can't do this for you. That, that shift of, oh my gosh, I can't believe this is happening. I can't undo that. I can't flip that switch for you. There are evil people. There are evil organizations. There are. All of those things are completely true. I can't change that for you. What I can do is tell you from someone who's seen it. I've been in the midst of countries as they were literally falling apart. There's evil all around you. You can't talk evil out of not being evil. You can't do it. And sometimes we are meant to be divided. That's reality. I'll put that link in there about the protection that you can get. Um, I, will, I will tell you this just very briefly. Folks, your homeowner's insurance, your renter's insurance specifically excludes anything having to do with firearms. It specifically excludes any sort of protection for you. You think, well, the government or the, the, you know, the, the uh, defense attorneys, they'll, they'll help me. They hate guns too. You need a very specific type of representation. You need a very specific set of things to know and to do and to not say and to say. You need those things. Otherwise, they'll take everything you have. Everything you have. I will say this. If those dear people out in St. Louis, I think it was, that had to stand their ground in front of their house, now they're going to be charged with, with, with all kinds of stupid things. They were under attack and they responded to that attack. If they had second call defense, they would not have lost their guns. Because the right attorney with training and experience in this field, would have taken the preemptive steps to keep that from happening. I just, you know, look, I'm not getting rich off of it. It's pennies, literally pennies. I would not be without it, and I don't think you should be either. Even if you just own a gun, I would not be without it. Your homeowners doesn't protect you. Your, your job, what about your job? Remember, so many people lose their jobs over these things become nationally known, you know, the, the highlight, you know, if it bleeds, it leads. You have to have protection, unfortunately, for those things. I don't like it. 
that you have to, but you do. That's reality. I'll put the link in there. Thanks for indulging me today. You can't talk evil out of being evil. And sometimes we are meant to be divided. There is a clear difference between good and evil now. President Trump has peeled back the layers. And it's up to us now to see it and react. And by the way, not for nothing. I implore you to do everything you can to be registered to vote. And vote in November. My God, if we don't, if we do not win, I'll do it. For sure thing, I'll send it to you, David. David's asked for the links for the for that uh, second call offense. You get a free month if you include my number in there. They give you a free month. They what they do is they send you a check for one month. They send that back to you. It's awesome, and they do it fast. It's amazing. We are in dangerous, perilous times, and friends. You cannot. The whole mask thing, putting the mask on or not. Look, I, let me say this as I close. I, you want to wear a mask? Great. Wear a mask. You don't want to wear a mask? Okay. Don't wear a mask. Just like if you want to carry a gun, carry a gun. If you don't want to carry a gun, don't carry a gun. I'm alright with that. I am totally okay with that. But as a country, mm mm. That group compliance. They've lied to you so many times. Why would you believe anything they say? Sincerely. Why would you believe anything they say? Don't wear masks. They won't help you. You don't need them. Well, you better wear masks. I don't believe a thing they say. Every, every testing center has come under scrutiny because they've, they've lied and they've skewed the numbers and they've, you know, they've done all these things and it's disgusting. Reporting one positive four to six times. Somebody stands in line, they fill out the form to be tested, and then they end up leaving. They're counted as a positive. 300,000 false positives. Come on. You got to start accepting what you're seeing. You got to start accepting what you're seeing. Can't talk evil out of being evil. Remember what I said at the beginning. Sometimes, sometimes evil looks enticing. If you think of it, share this. Share it across everything that you do. I sincerely appreciate it. Take good care. God bless you. Thank you for joining Dr. Sean today. Please follow Dr. Sean at www.drseangreener.com and on social media at facebook.com forward slash smgreener, Twitter at The Ninja Pastor, and on Instagram at The Ninja Pastor. If you would like to support Dr. Sean's ministry and send Bibles around the world, don't forget to hit the donate page on drseangreener.com. Or go to paypal.me forward slash Dr. Sean Greener to invest in spreading the Word of God to the world. And please download our free apps to listen to our Spreaker radio show. Thank you again for listening, and don't forget to share.